Hi, did you ever wonder just how tricky and complicated it is to produce high quality API steel grades for pipelines or HSLA steels for lightweight car bodies? And have you ever thought about the complex measures needed to achieve this objective? In the next few minutes, I'm going to explain what can make this task far easier and which new technologies are available for the attainment of top quality at low cost. But firstly, let's have a look at what primarily defines API and HSLA steels. Basically, the most important characteristics of steel are strength, toughness, weldability, and corrosion resistance. But what happens from a metallurgical standpoint during steelmaking? Now, I know the word metallurgy scares virtually everybody, but there's no need to worry, as I will keep it as simple as possible. Liquid steel is either produced from pig iron in a converter melt shop or scrap is melted in an electric arc furnace. During casting, the steel starts to solidify from the outside to the center and crystals grow in tree-like shapes. The so-called dendrites then gradually consume all the liquid that remains between the tops of these trees and their branches. In the conventional process, the cast slabs are stored in a slab yard where they cool down. They are then reheated for rolling. At this point, the microstructure consists of large grains. However, during rolling, not only is the desired thickness attained, but also the required fine microstructure. Rolling is usually completed in two steps, consisting of roughing and finishing. In the first step, the grainy structure of the core is eradicated by massive deformation and new small dumpling-shaped grains are formed. This is called recrystallization. However, recrystallization only occurs above a certain temperature, which is called the non-recrystallization temperature. Below this temperature, the microalloying elements in the solution are transformed into precipitates, which are small, hard particles in the steel matrix that hinder further recrystallization. The second rolling step is performed below the non-recrystallization temperature in order to achieve a flat pancake-like shape as a basis for a fine grain structure after cooling. This is called thermomechanical rolling. In the cooling zone, the structure of the steel is converted from a high-temperature crystalline form known as austenite into a low-temperature form containing ferrite and certain percentages of bionite, pearlite or martensite. During this transformation, the pancaked austenite grains provide the best possible basis for the creation of a very fine ferrite microstructure. This is the origin of high-strength steel. In addition, fine grain also means first-rate toughness, which is another key feature of API grades. We now know how the ideal microstructure for pipeline applications is achieved and logically the question arises as to whether or not there's potential for further optimization. Naturally, there is. This is because the mechanical properties and quality of steel are determined both by chemical composition and the production process employed. The defining factors for the properties of high-strength steels are ferrite grain size, precipitates and the percentages of other phases such as pearlite, bainite and martensite. Precipitates are needed to control microstructure evolution during rolling and for the precipitation hardening of the finished product. This requires a sufficient amount of alloying elements in the solution such as niobium prior to hot rolling. Alloys resemble a lunchbox for a hike, which is given to the steel for its processing journey. The consumption of the packed lunch depends on temperature, for just as sandwiches are eaten during every break, each time the temperature drops, for example when the slabs cool, micro-alloys are gobbled up. In addition, should the temperature fluctuate during slab-by-slab -slab rolling, it's essential that a finishing mill entry temperature below the non-recrystallization level is nonetheless guaranteed. This is achieved by so-called over-alloying, which functions perfectly, but unfortunately is a rather expensive way for steel to survive the trip. Extensive alloying can only be avoided by means of direct cast rolling and constant temperatures. This means that just a small backpack with fewer alloy sandwiches is required, as one can be certain that the final destination can be reached by the shortest possible route.
This sounds good, but is it only theory? And do possibilities really exist for enhanced steel production? Well, as we're living in the high-tech 21st century, the question as to whether or not room for improvement exists can only be answered with a resounding yes. Using the highly conventional approach to producing, high-quality microalloyed liquid steel is cast in continuous casting machines, after which the resultant slabs are cooled and then reheated and rolled. Generally, this is in order, but it is a highly cost-intensive process, and owing to the additional cooling, the backpack has to be filled with a lot of alloy sandwiches in order that the goal is reached. Over the years, a number of combined casting and rolling plants have been built, but the traditional principle remained the same. For while it's true that the slabs do not cool down to room temperature, they are still rolled slab by slab in a so-called batch process, during which the temperature is subject to certain fluctuations that can only be compensated for by over-alloying. This constitutes a slight improvement, but as there is only one rolling step, the total control freedom offered by thermomechanical rolling is lost. Therefore, it's time to speed things up and get rid of the hurdles. Firstly, we will chuck out the tunnel furnace, which creates a lot of surface scale. This is replaced with a short induction heater, which additionally contributes to reduced energy consumption. Then we split rolling into two steps in order that the first rolling step can use the energy from the hot cast strand. Finally, cutting no longer takes place after casting, but at the end of rolling, just before the down coilers. In combination with endless operation, the two separate rolling steps offer the possibility of exact temperature control prior to finish rolling. Accordingly, precise microstructure engineering is facilitated, which results in a dramatic reduction in the consumption of expensive alloying elements. What's more, this is not merely a figment of the imagination, as since 2009 it has been functioning successfully at the Arvidi steel plant in Cremona, Italy, in a highly modern and compact endless strip production plant. Here, the process is extremely compact, and due to a powerful caster, the first rolling stage can follow immediately. The soft core allows perfect shaping during the initial rolling phase with respect to both crown and wedge. Subsequently, the thin intermediate strip can be reheated in just 10 seconds before entering the second rolling phase, thus offering a perfect split between recrystallization in the high reduction mill area and thermomechanical rolling in the finishing area. And what's the bottom line? Firstly, perfect geometry. Secondly, immense savings of expensive alloying elements. Thirdly, sizable energy savings. Fourthly, an increase in yield of over 98% from the liquid steel to good coil as rolling is endless and avoids head and tail losses. Not to forget a drastic reduction in overall turnkey investment owing to the line's compact layout and length of only 180 meters. And finally, the clearly positive environmental aspects. Therefore, as you can see, metallurgy isn't so difficult and we really have entered a new era of steel production. Arvidi, ESP.